Hi guys and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, hi hello, my name is Glow. So today's going to be a little bit different, it's not really so structured. Um, I'm just going to be talking about myself uh, and my experience that I've been having for the past month or two uh, with splitting and dissociating because I am currently still on and off splitting and dissociating and it's really horrible to experience because I've been so stable for so long and now I just feel like my whole world is just kind of crumbling I guess. Um, so before we get started I want to put in a trigger warning uh, if you aren't comfortable with what I'm going to be talking about that's okay you can just watch some of my other videos or just wait until I upload another one. Um, I'm going to be mentioning addiction and suicidal ideation um so yeah if if that's something that you can't really deal with listening to right now then that's okay you just you just come back for the next one so before i actually noticed that i was splitting uh i could feel a shift in my mood um and i could notice it for like two weeks or so um, but I just thought I know how to deal with low moods, I know how to, like I have strategies to cope and I thought oh it's fine, like there's no point mentioning this, like I'll get over it, it's fine, it's no big deal, I know what I'm doing. Um, and then after about two weeks or so I had like a mini breakdown when I was at Beth's house, which I currently am, she's at work. Um, and I was just, my whole mood just changed and she was like, what's wrong? And I just, I just said like how I felt in a way because I couldn't describe it. I just felt like I wanted to rip my skin off of my body. I didn't feel comfortable. I just wanted to rip myself literally apart. Like maybe you'd seen a cartoon or something, I don't know. Like I just want, it just, it didn't feel right and i have a problem with alcohol i always have done since i was like a kid um it wasn't until christmas day that i decided i can't do this anymore after i made a tear out of myself um so i haven't drank but well, i had two pints in january like casual and then i thought mm -hmm, i can't be bothered so i technically drank in january so I've been sober from alcohol for eight months and I haven't really missed it to be honest like people will be drinking and I yeah I do kind of feel like a bit left out sometimes but like I don't miss drinking but when I noticed my mood shifting it was like I just wanted to drink and that's when I kind of realized I don't necessarily drink to have fun it's more so to numb my emotions, which I'm sure a lot of borderlines do. There'll be not everyone, like I always say, not everyone's the same. I always say that, but for me, it was just because the emotions are so intense, anything I could do to numb them, well, not anything, like I wouldn't go that far, but I just like numbing them. And I said, that I just I just wanted to get drunk I just wanted to just drink and drink but the thing is with that it doesn't necessarily numb your emotions it just makes you not care and I caused a lot more chaos so that's when I kind of noticed it wasn't going so great so for me I when my anxiety gets really bad I am sick like I feel like I need to be sick and a lot of the times I am sick. Um, it's happened quite a lot and in front of people and it's always so embarrassing for me because I'm like, I'm sorry, like I've had to ask people to pull over the car before because I thought I was going to be sick. I've had to like run out of bed to the bathroom and be sick. There was one time I was with my housemate and she got up to like go back to her bedroom and I sat up to like see her out and exorcist vomited all over my floor that was funny to be honest it was quite funny but <laughs> yeah no it's it's not good though is it um and for about a year ago I was sick every day or just about I used to get morning sickness which isn't 
which like wasn't a pregnancy thing it was just every morning I'd wake up and I just I'd need to be sick because it was just a lot just being alive I guess um so now I have started being sick a lot again and that day when I told Beth about how I was feeling and wanting to drink and stuff um she calmed me down and then we went to have a bath and I just remember curling up in a little ball on the bathroom floor sobbing just not knowing what to do um and she was very supportive uh which is really lovely but it's it's just so hard and <laughs> and I'm a really proud person I guess I don't like people seeing me weak or low which is why making a YouTube channel is also pretty scary because it's it's showing people my vulnerable side and I don't like doing that really so after this I also noticed maybe a little bit before as well but I noticed I was getting angry and snappy when normally I wouldn't be um because as I say I was stable for ages like nothing really bothered me like anything that used to bother me I'm like I don't care like that's nothing because to a, no a normal person it is nothing um but now I noticed that um it was getting worse and I like I <laughs> Just someone would say something or do something and I would perceive it as an attack and I'd get angry and I'd get snappy and like people are like why are you acting like that like what the fuck and I'm like I don't mean to like everything's just it just feels like an attack or a dig or that no one really likes me and I at this point I haven't even told people what splitting is I've just assumed you all knew it's it's like black and white thinking it's good or it's bad it's amazing or it's the worst so it's it's like one thing or the other it's not there's no gray area you were attacking me or you weren't it's not a matter of oh well miscommunication or i didn't mean it like that it was a joke it's a matter of you meant that dot dot da. so my head kind of took a lot of things as an attack when it it wasn't and it still isn't and I'm still experiencing this. Um, <laughs> it's it's so hard to live with BPD when you're splitting and dissociating because your reality isn't reality, but it it's your reality. So <laughs> to me, it was it was it's real. People don't want to be friends with me don't want to know me don't care about me and logically like I still have that little logical part of my brain logically I know it's not true but in my reality as of current it is true and then I'll have times like this where I can calm down and I can talk about it and I'm like I know it's irrational I know I know I, I know but I can't help it and I've been meaning to film this for weeks because I wanted to show people what it's like to be in that splitting mindset um so I'm I'm okay at the minute um but things change all the time like it's it's unstable I guess EUPD emotionally unstable and I hate that because I don't like to think of myself as unstable but Hey, I guess I am. Fun. I also, when I'm splitting, I notice that I can't communicate properly. And it's as well when I'm in an episode, no matter what it is, depressive, anxious, blah, blah, blah. When I'm in it, I really, really struggle to talk about it and communicate with people. And I've gotten a lot better. Like, I, every time, every day I say to Beth, I'm, I'm like, I'm splitting, like... I don't mean to be a dick I don't I like I know my thoughts aren't true I know that you do love me and I, I know everything that is happening in the real world but in my reality it's just different and when you know this how the hell do you 
communicate it to people without sounding crazy. That's why I never normally communicate it because I'm like, I know it's not logical, but it is, it, it's my reality. So because I've noticed my mood changing and me being unstable and causing arguments, I started trying to isolate myself, which is not a good thing to do really. Like you shouldn't, be isolating because the more alone you are it's like the more you stew and the more you convince yourself that you were right like no one cares about you no one loves you um, and then I sometimes start arguments with people to push them away to w one protect them because I'm like they don't deserve to deal with me like this isn't fair like who would want me in their life? Um, but then also to kind of push them away and if they leave, I can be like, I knew you were gonna leave because I'm crazy. So, but then it's my fault because I purposefully would do that. So at the time, like when I, I was having an argument the other day that I started and I was saying mean things that I didn't mean and I'm, it's like, my logical part at the back of my brain is like, don't send that, don't say that, it's not true, don't, don't, because you're just gonna cause an argument over nothing because like, it's not worth it, what are you doing? But then the rest of my brain, it's like standing in front of a sheet of glass that's a bit frosted and screaming at yourself to stop because you're gonna hurt yourself or someone and the other person just can't hear. It's, it's awful. <laughs> it's really, really awful and um, really emotional because I've lost so many people, maybe because of my own doing. And that's really hard to accept. So when I first got diagnosed, I was offered group therapy on the NHS, but where I was in my life, I, really didn't feel comfortable talking to one person never mind a whole group of people because in my head I was like these people might know me or like they might know me through other people and then tell everyone my business they might go home and say oh there's this fucking girl in my group called Georgia blah 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 uh and it, like I don't know I don't trust people like so that just wasn't an option and no matter what I did, they say, if you don't do group therapies, nothing we can do for you. So I felt like I had no option but to seek out private therapy, which I've probably spent thousands of pounds over the last couple of years attending. And it's worth every penny because I'm such, mu I'm much more stable. Um, but now that I've started deteriorating again, I, I've been, I need more help. Um, people around me have also noticed this and I have a doctor's appointment next week to try and seek out some more help. Um, maybe even give the group therapy a go, who knows. I'm also gonna see about maybe changing my medication uh, because I'm on search relief for my anxiety, but I feel like it's not working because I'm being sick a lot and I'm anxious all day. So yeah, so I'm hoping this doctor's appointment's gonna be useful. Um, maybe I can update you guys if anyone is interested, uh, tell you what happens next. Like, I just wanted to film this to kind of show what it's like when you're in it. Um, last night, I just cried for hours because I started an argument for no reason, which then upset people. And that, and then I'm like, oh my God, why are they upset? Um, it's, it's about me, like, fuck off. 
Like, it, the world doesn't revolve around me. The world doesn't shine out, the sun doesn't shine out my arsehole. Do you know what I mean? Like, and I know all of this logically, but when you've grown up with a fucking narcissistic parent who abused you, you can take on that mindset. For years I was told you were such like your dad. You remind me of your dad. And no one said that to me for years now, a very long time, which shows to me that I'm changing, I'm improving, I'm not acting like a narcissistic piece of shit who doesn't care about anyone but themselves. But when I'm splitting, I feel like I'm reverting back to that person and I don't want to be that person. I don't want anything to do with who, who I was when I was younger because I was, I don't know, like I'm just going off on a tangent now. But yeah, like, <laughs> yeah not doing great just wanted to jump on here and say not doing great if you're not doing great same we're not alone i guess there's people to talk to talk to them try not to start an argument easier said than done and yeah leave a comment if you want an update like the video if you like the video uh subscribe subscribe um for more mental health videos and i do want to do some different kind of videos as well but where my head is at the minute I'm not really feeling it you know um and yeah last things last uh check out the giveaway on my instagram uh twitter uh yeah um slated alexis sands book about a person who has bpd giveaway ends on the 1st of september the way it is i mean people ha it's you have to subscribe to me and retweet Multiple people have just retweeted and not subscribed, so they're not in the prize draw. So the way it stands currently, everyone who has subscribed and retweeted is a winner because there's less people who's entered than I have codes to give away. But if you want to get involved, go on. If I don't reach my maximum people to give away books to, then I guess we can do something on my YouTube. I'll just pick a random person who's left a comment and been supporting me because YouTube doesn't show you who your subscribers are, so that doesn't work. But yeah, thanks for sticking around. See you in the next one.